Hello everyone, my name is Jocelyn, you may call me Joy, and we have something very deeply controversial to talk about today. It's the new Scottish hate crime bill. It may have come into effect one month ago on April the 1st, but it is certainly no joke. More correctly called the Hate Crime and Public Order Act, it has stirred controversy from free speech advocates and free speech advocates alike. But what's it all about? Well, let me tell you, it's... No, no, don't, no! JK Rowling. Part of the reason this video has taken so long to make is because I just want to be done talking about this tiresome individual. But, like a boomerang to the face, she just keeps coming back and is just as welcome. It was impossible to talk about this topic without mentioning JK Rowling, her effects, her opinions, or as I call her now, Joanne the Liar, the Holocaust Denier, because she keeps inserting her unwelcome opinion into any topics that even remotely skirt the issue of trans rights. Perhaps Slytherin, or maybe Hufflepuff, uh, or trans women aren't really women. Wait, what? I mean, uh, the first two things. Okay, who's the next girl or boy? There's only those two. But wait, is it now illegal for her to share an opinion? Surely that can't be okay. Well, we'll have to put a pin in that for now. She already claims to be fine with incurring any kind of punishment when it comes to this sort of thing. J.K. Rowling claims she would happily spend two years in prison for misgendering a trans person. Harry Potter author was responding to a speculative report about a hypothetical new hate crime legislation under a Labour government. To be clear, this is Muggle Jail, not Azkaban. Although there'd be not much point in sending her there because someone already sucked all that fun and happiness out of her anyway. Like the uh, article said there, this was a speculative bill that could happen under a Labour government, which, you know, it was reported back in October that this might be a thing. I don't hold much stock in it now because things have changed a little bit since then. But also the more important point is that it has in fact happened in Scotland now, where she lives. And it comes with even heftier prison sentences. Quote, Whatever, I'll be dead. J.K. Rowling brushes off concerns over legacy in light of trans views. Like, who says that? That is deranged. That is unhinged. It is proof that she's too far gone. Even if, you know, this is, this is the... Like, clearly this is the hill she is willing to die on when it comes to women's rights. Further proof comes, if needed at all, from this article that was written in The Spectator. And before I even get into this, look, I will tell you up front right now, it's anti-trans bias is showing. J.K. Rowling won't forgive Harry Potter actors for trans stance. All is not well in the Harry Potter universe. Author of the hit wizarding novels and prominent women's rights campaigner J.K. Rowling has revealed that, even if they apologise, she will not go easy on the lead actors of the Potter films for their stance on the trans debate. Less uh, expecto forgiveness and more expelliarmus. That was cringe as fuck to read. Mostly just because my wizarding joke was funnier. But also, um, it praised her novels and called her a women's rights campaigner, like, unironically? Oh yeah, the bias is definitely showing. Rowling's comments come in the wake of the published report by top paediatrician Dr. Hilary Cass, which found that, quote, remarkably weak evidence and a, quote, lack of high quality research had allowed young people in the UK to change their gender. 
Let's just stop and talk about the cast report for a moment because Luxander did a really great video about this. I would say go watch that if you want more details. But essentially this is a report by a paediatrician called Hilary Cass about the trans youth healthcare that's provided by the NHS. The Cass report is also full of anti-trans bias. The methodology is biased, the writing shows little to no understanding of how trans people actually, you know, behave, function, feel. The remarkably weak evidence and a lack of high quality research better describes the CAS report itself. But again, this article doesn't even mention that. In a series of tweets, the acclaimed, <laughs> at least it's calling them tweets, in a series of tweets, the acclaimed writer blasted supporters of gender-altering treatment in children and said they should apologise to traumatised detransitioners and vulnerable women. I'm sorry, why should people like me apologise to people who are not actually hurt by us? People are given more than enough opportunities and evidence and access to information than ever before now because of the internet, because of trans people who are saying their own testimony, their own uh, experiences with hormones, their own, like, you, you can't take hormones without knowing what the effects are going to be. You can't. Oh, and of course, gender-altering treatment in children, that's another dog whistle. It's really just puberty blockers for children at most, which children in the UK cannot even access anymore. The writer continued, Today's not a triumph, it's the laying bare of a tragedy. One social media user wrote that Daniel Radcliffe who in the films played Potter and Emma Watson, who played his best friend Hermione Granger, owe Rowling a very public apology, safe in the knowledge that you will forgive them. No, they don't. Rowling simply replied, not safe, I'm afraid. Ouch. Not safe, I'm afraid. Celebs who cozied up to a movement intent on eroding women's hard-won rights and who use their platforms to cheer on the transitioning of minors can save their apologies for traumatised detransitioners and vulnerable women reliant on single-sex bases. So even if Radcliffe and Watson U-turn on their position about being trans-supportive, let's say for the sake of example, they join the Turf Brigade, Rowling will not forgive them. There will be no olive branch. It shows a lack of empathy as well as a lack of understanding towards, you know, trans lives and trans rights, which, God, it needs be remarked, it needs be said, is not intent on eroding women's rights. Why the fuck would trans women want to erode women's rights? What? The gender transitioning of minors is mostly, if not exclusively now in the UK at least, non-medical and completely reversible, so no harm done there. And exactly what vulnerable women are reliant on sex-based spaces that exclude men that aren't already just TERFs. Because trans women are women in the way that, not just the way that they see themselves, but in the way that society treats them, and sometimes that is poorly. Hi everyone, so more things have been happening since I recorded this uh, latest video and I thought I'd better include them because if I don't then it will just get brought up anyway and I don't have 
the best head on me at the moment, so I'm not going to appear on camera for this little part. I'm basically editing and I look like shit. Anyway, one of the developments that has happened is Daniel Radcliffe has actually commented about what J.K. Rowling said about him and Emma Watson and how she would not forgive them for siding with trans rights. And he has made a public statement, the first statement since 2020, so nearly four years. It makes me really sad, ultimately, he said, because I do look at the person that I met, the times that we met, and the books that she wrote, and the world that she created, and all of that is, to me, so deeply empathic. Joe, obviously Harry Potter would not have happened without her, so nothing in my life would have probably happened the way it is without that person, he added. But that doesn't mean that you owe the things you truly believe to someone else for your entire life. Just to recap, back in 2020, after Rowling called out an article's use of the phrase people who menstruate, she tweeted, I'm sure there used to be a word for those people. Someone help me out. Woomben, Wimpund, Woomud. Around that time, Radcliffe wrote an essay for The Trevor Project as a way of showing support for the trans community and apologised for the pain that Rowling's comments have caused the Harry Potter fandom. He said, Transgender women are women. Any statement to the contrary erases the identity and dignity of transgender people and goes against all advice given by professional healthcare associates who have far more expertise on this subject matter than either Joe or I. So that's been his stance on everything that's happened. Uh, and it seems that, yes, he is not trying to actively... Um, call her names or call her uh, this, that and the other, but he is in disagreement with her, not only vocally, but publicly. And it doesn't look like that's going to change either. But Rowling and others should be allowed to say these things, right? Like, even if they are morally and factually wrong. Well, even Twitter X thing doesn't think so. Hello, we have received your complaint regarding the account at JK Rowling for the following content. In accordance with applicable law, X is now withholding the reported content in the EU specifically for the following legal grounds illegal or harmful speech. This was in relation to J.K. Rowling's recent Holocaust denialism, in which she separately chose to target a Jewish journalist with legal threat unless the journalist retracted and apologised for telling the truth. We can vouch that this has the signature appearance of J.K. Rowling sending a threatening legal demand, which specifically includes pinning the compelled apology treat like OP did it. Essentially, they've said that J.K. Rowling is posting illegal or harmful speech, which in the EU makes sense because in Germany it is illegal to do any form of Holocaust denialism. But it gets better. Hello, we have received your complaint regarding the following content from the account at M4 Stata. In accordance with applicable law, X is now withholding the reported content in the EU specifically for the following legal grounds, illegal or harmful speech. J.K. Rowling's transphobic buddy, Maya Forstater, has now also had a tweet restricted in EU countries for illegal and harmful speech. J.K. Rowling and her horde of bigots are actually dangerous, and more and more people are waking up to it. So, then, <laughs> because of course the weekend never stops, and it's just insane trying to keep up with all the craziness that is this whirlwind life of JK Rowling the bitch and I'm showing an image now of a meme that was posted of something that Elon said quote while I heartily agree with your points regarding sex slash gender may I suggest also posting interesting and positive content on other matters this has been turned into a meme about 
apparently how he's the condescending businessman, which I'm going to say is true. My response to this is Elon takes over an already toxic platform and dials it up to 11 and then turns around to the followers and says, hey guys, be nice. And the TwitX users turn back around and tell him, fuck off, insert slurs here. There has been one person calling Elon Musk a slur for trans people. The funny part is, if she keeps this up, she's not only going to push away all of her enemies and her former allies, but also her current allies as well, which I think is hilarious. She should just keep doing that. She should just keep doing that until she's completely alone and has completely sunk to the depths of the depravity that she is now in of completely hatred and vile violence and disgusting hate speech and see where it gets her. See exactly where it lands her, you know. While I completely agree that he is being a patronising and condescending douchebag, as well as being incredibly naive for thinking that he can cultivate this kind of really awful behaviour and then not expect to get shot down when he says, oh, but by the way, play nice. I am also not in favour of anything that Rowling does or says, and even here in her response, she says, ha ha, just realised that I missed being advised to share more positive content yesterday, sharing this about my writing life, which happens to have been published today in the Sunday Times, should in no way be interpreted as me doing as I'm told. And then there's a link to an article uh, J.K. Rowling, I've got six more books in my head. At this point, I want them to stay in her head. Nobody needs any more of her poison in the world. The thing I said to my uh, researcher is that it's impossible to keep up with this insane bitch anymore. And she said to me, that's the whole lot of them. I think that's on purpose. It's overwhelming to keep track of all their corrupt shit. And that does kind of seem like the point, doesn't it? To constantly keep trans people on the back foot whilst they gain an upper hand, not just culturally, but also politically. Which is why I started this particular segment by saying that I am actually tired of this. I am done with this tiresome human being, as well as her whole fascist movement. Yes, I called it fascist. No, I'm not even being, like, hyperbolic anymore. So this really does kind of illustrate the, the difference between freedom of speech and hate speech. When somebody is impacted in a way that is actively harmful. However, um, it is also true that this is a private company with its own rules, not a lawmaker proposing bills that have a potential for hefty prison sentences. And also, I mention all of this because this is not just about one overprivileged middle-aged white bitch. She is the face of a movement right now. And it is a scary, scary thing because that movement ha is having its ideas trickle up and it is echoing within the halls of government right now. As much as there is a push from the Scottish bill to try and prevent hate speech, there is almost an equal and opposing force, a little bit like Newton's laws, where some people are just making rules about, well, you've got to protect the freedom of speech and they are going to try and include harmful, damaging, derogatory, 
hate speech. So let's see what this bill actually says. Freedom of speech! There's nothing more valuable than freedom of speech. Right? Well, that's why it's enshrined in law. Until now, that is. With the Scottish Bill infringing J.K. Rowling's freedom to incorrectly call trans women predator men. I think if it hadn't been for her spilling her vile hatred all over Twitter, then this might not even be happening right now. She brought it on herself. It might as well be called the Shut J.K. Rowling Up Bill. It has a ring to it. But doesn't everyone have a legal right to be wrong? Like, it's not illegal to be incorrect about something, right? Given that, I mean, I still wish that she wouldn't. The, you know, why should she want to be wrong? Why should she want to mislabel trans people, if not for the blatant bigotry? There are, of course, two very important things to mention here. The first, which has been pointed out by many people over many courses of many videos of many, many, many things. Freedom of speech is not the same thing as freedom from consequences. Person A says a thing. Person B says, well, that's incorrect, that's wrong, and you're stupid for saying that. And then person A can't turn around and say, but my freedom of speech, because person B is also using their freedom of speech to criticize person A. Criticism itself isn't a violation of freedom of speech. But hate speech is. So I'll define hate speech as best I can because definitions, especially in this context, matter a lot. Hate speech, just as with free speech, is an action. It is a thing that people do. It is a thing that people, like, it is a thing that affects other people. It is speech that is targeted towards an individual or a group that is violent or threatening or vilification, or defamatory, or abusive. That infracts upon the freedom of others. That is the line that defines the difference between hate speech and free speech. Right? That, that is the line that shall not be crossed. I think. As Owen Morgan from the Telltale Channel frequently says, your right to swing your fist ends at the tip of my nose. And that includes metaphorically. And of course, what applies to thee applies to me too. I'm not suddenly exempt from any freedom of speech slash hate speech encroachment just because I am part of a vulnerable minority. Like, that's ridiculous. There's no special treatment here. Not for me, not for JK Rowling, not anyone. And for her, just as it is for anyone, smuggling in hate speech disguised as freedom of speech is just as disingenuous as masquerading anti-trans rhetoric as simply women's rights activisms. Recognize it. Isn't it absolutely hysterically double triple bone crunchingly hilarious how some people from certain minorities can get away with saying words that others can't? Gosh, whatever happened to freedom of speech? Poor, poor, precious white. Fox News viewers and guests and hosts who so desperately wish but just 
can't say the n-word on television. Not at least without some sort of backlash. And no, <laughs> don't delve into the reasons why. Like, why would, why would someone want to? These words that have been created because Words don't just pop up from the ground like sprouts as labels to other, to belittle, or to otherwise uh, negatively impact those within the identity. Well, those words are now the new status symbol. Is this literally why cis, straight, powerful, middle-class men think that they don't have power? How can the LGBTQ community claim to be oppressed? How dare we? Gay marriage is legal now. Never mind the tens of thousands of trans people who are currently being denied healthcare to transition. Um, teens who are being actively prevented by law from accessing puberty blockers who then age up out of the youth care program into the adult program which does not carry over and then there's just the waiting hellscape of that nonsense seriously the law specifies that anyone on a nhs waiting list should wait no longer than something like 18 weeks and this applies to all services, whether it be transition healthcare related or something as seriously slap you in the face as cancer. But for those of us not willing to wait, we have to take the grey slash black market route for medications that are readily accessible to cis folks forget that this is the same recycled material of intentional government neglect borrowed from 30 40 years ago inflicted upon gay bi and otherwise queer men during the hiv aids crisis who cares if there are parts of the world where lgbtq plus identities are legally punished by imprisonment, or death, or just a gay teacher getting fired for hanging a rainbow pride flag in their classroom, just or, or, or mentioning their same gender spouse, like in a conversation quite innocently once, or heaven and hell forbid, a teacher going by an honorific that might you know, indicate their gender in some way. What do the anti-liberals want? Hey, Chad, you're right, Veronica. No more of this Mr. Harding and Mrs. Smith business anymore. But that's all okay, because we have <laughs> privilege. The privilege to say the word <laughs> without social repercussions. Certainly less than a cis straight man would get anyway. I can say <laughs> queer <laughs> pack a <laughs> pirate flame. <laughs> I can even just about stretch to a throwaway dyke or hermaphrodite comment, but even then, only after some careful consideration. The history of oppression that's baked into these terms isn't something for anyone to worry about. Uh, certainly not someone outside the minority group. And the reclamation of dignity, rights and power haven't anything to do with why someone from inside the group would want to use them freely. Without any context or history. I hope, as I always hope with these videos, that I've adequately made my point 
about slurs and how they are intended to hurt and cause prejudice and their misuse under the guise of freedom of speech. And of course, I will, although I don't think I should have to, explain why these slurs can be used somewhat more freely by members of the minority group that the slurs are targeted towards. Originally, of course, these words were directed towards people of minority group as derogatory. But as I have previously stated in other videos, which I can't remember where I've said it now because I've made so many videos, the, for the most part, members of the minority group aren't genuinely going to be prejudiced against other members of the same group. Now look, this is not a hard and fast rule. Homophobic gays and transphobic trans people do exist. I can't quite fathom or figure to understand their psychology why, but they do. The same cannot immediately be said for someone who is outside of the group. We just don't know your intentions, buddy. However, generally speaking, being flippant about a slur or reclaiming a word in the sense of um, power, it's, it's our way of taking the venom out of them. So let's see what this bill actually says. Jonathan Pye. No, this isn't another segue. This is the part where we actually take the pin out from earlier. <laughs> um, so he made a video about this about three weeks ago. Some of you may already have seen it. And he said, well, why don't we just see for ourselves? Just the briefest of looks at the details of this new bill you begin to see that it is, at best, massively ill-conceived, frighteningly vague and therefore scarily open to abuse, utterly unworkable and almost certainly unpoliceable, and at worst, an unthinkably draconian and insidious piece of legislation that attacks the civil liberties of anyone stepping foot across Hadrian's Wall who expresses an opinion that doesn't fit in the very narrow Overton's window of what so-called liberals would call acceptable. And there's more. The lambasting just keeps coming. He's called this new law vague, open to abuse, draconian, attacking civil liberties. He casually throws out the tea slur as well, almost in defiance of the hate crime bill in the name of what edgy anti-woke comedy or whatever. But I certainly didn't appreciate that for reasons that um, I already described in this video. But is he wrong about the bill? Well, all the information that I have came from another video by TLDR News. This bill expands the list of characteristics protected by the Public Order Act of 1986 beyond race to also include age, disability, religion, sexual orientation, trans identification, and variance in sexual characteristics, basically against stirring up hatred towards anyone within these categories. Legally speaking, anyone disrupting tolerance or social peace, um, or things like doing discrimination is already not protected by freedom of speech within the EU. And the UK, including Scotland, seems to have grandfathered this in post-Brexit. However, in the new Scottish bill, discussion or criticism or expressing antipathy, dislike or ridicule towards anyone of or because of those protected characteristics isn't illegal under this new law. So essentially it's kind of said that yes, these things are illegal, but no, they're not illegal. The vagueness of the definitions involved and the exceptions to the rules basically leave it down to the police to determine what constitutes a hate crime or a non-crime incident. 
The bill also provides little solution on how to enforce or implement the law, only that it's punished by up to seven years imprisonment for breaking this law. I think that the goal was rather noble to create a tolerant society, to protect citizens and prevent hate crime. And those all seem like really great things. But of course, it was clearly a more nuanced and more difficult task than the Scottish government initially conceived. And it seems that while I seem to be able to define the line between hate speech and free speech, um, the legally speaking anyway, it is in fact, according to Scotland, a very extremely fuzzy line. And who is it that will bear the brunt of all the repercussions from this law? Well, you know the answer and so do I. At least you should know the answer by now. It's trans people, if you haven't been paying attention. I mean, how dare we try to live our lives free from persecution by a wealthy Karen living in a Scottish castle who wants the freedom and rights to endanger us. And clearly that excuse does not wash with me. But here's, here's the big question. Is it better to have her arrested or meet her ideas on the battleground of free exchange. Well, it's probably the latter. I don't know. I'm not an expert. I'm not here to tell you what to think. I'm just hoping that I've provided you with enough information to come up with reasonable, suitable conclusions for yourselves. But anywho, do let me know what you think in the comments below. But when it comes to hate speech, you should think of me as Scotland. I will just delete anything that is obtusely offensive. So, um, non-binary is valid, God damn it. I'll see you all soon. I think, I hope. Um, bye for now. Okay. <laughs> I think I'm done with this part. I don't want to do that again. Forget that this is the same recycled material of intentional government. The bill expands the... It's impossible to balance this right or disrupting social peace, or discriminating 